Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, in the last episode, we created a very simple little dialogue box for our player to be able to uh, talk to our NPC characters. So we'll just demonstrate it in action again here. Walk over to our little friend here. Say, oh, I, I accidentally skipped over that. Hold on. There we go. Hey there. All good. We've only got one line of dialogue. So, what if we want our characters to actually say... A little bit more than that well let's take a look at actually doing that and making it work in our game so um if we're going to have multiple lines of dialogue obviously we're not going to be able to handle it the same way so if I, if I just open our uh, on our canvas here our dialogue manager so we have uh, a line of text there and then on our dialogue zone we have a line of text that's been sent in for to read so what we're actually going to use is a system of um, arrays to store a bunch of text of lines of text and then we can cycle through the array um, one by one and load each bit each line of dialogue as we want it to load so let's open up first our dialogue manager in monodog I should have it open here there we go um, just let it catch up for a second there we go okay um so like I said, we want to use an array to store our lines of dialogue. Uh, so rather than being, um, we're not going to change our text or anything like that that's already been stored here because on our manager we're not actually storing anything. But for our purposes, while well, we test it out here, we are going to start store a default one. Um, and this is what we're actually going to use to store our lines in general anyway. So we're just going to add a new uh, array here. So we're going to say a public string and then our two uh, square brackets like that because we're making an array of strings so it'll be an array of lines of text and we'll call this our dialogue lines now we've used arrays before for when we were leveling up our player for to store if we go look at our player was it on our player himself or where did we put that? Just, yeah, there we go. We did put it on the campus. So we stored a whole bunch of numbers for when we level up for different values of HP and different attack and defense and all that. So they were all int values that we stored. But now we're going to use uh, string values. So if we go back in here. So we have our string array of dialogue lines. And we'll just just we'll just we'll save this so we can see an example of how it works. Um, and we'll go back into our dialogue manager. Wait for it to compile here. And we'll get a dialogue lines array here. Let's give it a second. There we go. So we got our dialogue lines array. We'll drop it down. Obviously, it's size zero by default. Let's make it just three. So what we can do is type in different lines of dialogue here. So we can say, just for now, we'll just say test one, test two, and test three. So now we actually want to be able to show this text here and um, be able to move on from one to the other. And it's going to be very simple to do that because because we're using an array, we can just refer to these elements by their numbers. So our first line will be element zero, our second line will be element one, and our third line will be element two. So we can go back in here. We'll obviously need a, a number value that we're going to use to keep track of what line are we currently shown in the game. So just below our dialog lines here, we're going to add a new public int that we will call current line. Okay, so then down here in our update loop here, we have our, um, our dialog box is active, and this is how we're deactivating it. And we have our down here, we're setting the text to be displayed when, um, when the player uh, walks into the area and presses the spacebar and they're calling this function. So we're going to do something slightly different. We're not going to use this function. We're actually going to create a new function, but we also want to get rid of this uh, stuff here because we don't want it to just automatically deactivate the box when you press space. Instead, we're going to put some two slashes in front of them to comment them out so they won't actually do anything anymore. Instead, what we wanted to do is when our player presses space, they're going to move on to the next line of dialogue. So we'll just say current line plus plus so that'll just will if we start off at current line zero that'll add one on when our player presses space so then what we want to do is check if our our current line value 
is actually uh, greater than however many lines we have in our array. So what we can do is say if our current line is uh, greater than or equal to, because if, say for example, if we just jump back in here for a minute, on our dialog manager, so we have, this is line zero, this is line one, this is line two. There is no line three, but we have our size is three. So if we were to go to try and get line three, obviously that wouldn't work because there is none. So we're saying back here, we're saying if it's greater than or equal to. So if it's greater than or equal to our dialog lines, um, oh, dialog lines, um, dot length. There we go. I kind of blanked on that for a second there, but so we're saying, so our dialog lines dot length at the moment is three. Um, and so what we're saying is, okay, if our current line is greater than or equal to the dialog, li dialog lines, that means we're at the end of the box. So now we know to, to deactivate the box at this stage. So what we're saying is we're at the end of the conversation, the player is pressing space one more time and then the box will disappear. So to do that, we're just doing the exact same thing as we have up here. So we'll just copy this and paste it back in there. And we'll obviously remove the comments so that it actually works. And the final thing we want to do is reset our current line back to the beginning. Current line equals zero. And that's just like a kind of, that's just to stop the, um, to stop the uh, this causing an issue. So if we weren't to set that back to zero, constantly this would be going, okay, current line is greater than this and it'll be trying to deactivate it the whole time because uh, we don't want that to be happening because the next line we're going to do here is we're going to say our, our uh, the text in our box, so our D text here, we're going to set that text to be equal to whatever line in our dialog lines array, so our dialog lines array, whatever one in there is equal to whatever our current line um, value is. So when our current line value is zero, it'll go look in the dialog lines array and it'll go, okay, we want to go at element zero here. So we'll get test one and we'll put that out into our dialog box. So let's test that now to make sure that that will work. So we're going to save. And so as I was saying, the reason we want to make sure that our current line here gets reset back to be zero is if we, if our current line here gets to be three in our situation, which is longer than our dialog lines, we'll deactivate the box and, and set our di dialog access to be false, but that number will still be greater than uh, what's in our dialog lines um, array. So then when you get down to here, we'll try to read dialog lines three here, and we don't have a dialog lines tree, so we'll start getting an error down in our console down here, which is obviously not what we want. So that's why we will just reset it back to be zero, so that it will always uh, know that it has something to display. Even if that box is empty, it'll still be something that is is sending into the uh, box on the screen. Even though it'll be invisible, it's still sending a line to that uh, text box. So we've saved this and we just let this compile down here now. And then on our dialog manager, I'm just gonna drop this down. We're just gonna start off with our dialog box active and we're gonna make sure our dialog active is set to true as well. And then we're, we're gonna hit play here. And there we go, we see we get test one, we hit space, we get test two, test three, and then the box disappears. So perfect, our dialog box is working just the way we want it. Well, I'll just um, deactivate these again. So now we need to set it up so that our villager here can actually send some text into that box. So what we can do is we're going to create a new function down here. Instead of just being um, public void show box, we're not going to use that one anymore because that's a that's perfectly viable for the way we did it in the previous episode. But because we're expanding and doing some different stuff, we want to handle this a different way now. So what we're actually going to do is create a new public void that we'll call show dialog and on this one we're not going to be sending in any kind of values here what we're going to do um, is say uh, just the exact same as we have up here we're going to say dialog actually one minute we don't need to type it all in again we can just copy this our dialog active is true and we want to set the dbox to be active as well now we could do the same thing we could pass in 
our array of strings here in the exact same way, but we want to do it slightly different just to show different ways of handling this kind of stuff. So what we're actually going to do is now, that's all we're going to put in our show dialog function here, but we're going to open up our dialog holder script as well. I'm going to come back into mono develop, let it open here. Give it a second. There we go. Okay. So just like we did for our dialog manager, we created an array of strings and our dialog holder here, we're going to do the exact same thing and uh, we'll create a public string array that we'll call dialog lines. And then down here on our on trigger say, we we have our demand that show box for when we press space and it would show the box but we're going to do something slightly different here we're going to hit uh, our slash slash there like that so we comment that out and um, what we actually want to do here now is check and make sure that our dialog box isn't already running because if our dialog dialogue, dialogue box is already running and we were to press space again we would be resetting ourselves back to the start because we're going to um, make sure that our lines always go from the start obviously uh, so what we want to do here is make a check and see if our dialog box is currently active so we can go to our, we already made a reference to our dialog manager up here so we can say if uh, our dialog manager dot um, dialog active so if that is true so back in here, if, if that's set to true, then we know that our dialog box is active and it's set to be false whenever our dialog box is inactive. So if that's true, then we could uh, we would not want anything to happen. So what we actually want to do is say, if that is false, so that's what we put a little exclamation mark in front. So if our dialog active is actually false, then we want to do some stuff because if it's false, then we know it's deactivated. So we know that we can actually go ahead and activate it. So here we can say, um, our d man, oh, not d main, d man dot show, oh, typed the wrong thing there, dot show dialog. Just move this down onto this line here. So our d man dot show dialog and our two brackets there like that. So that will activate our dialog box over here. It'll make sure it's true, but these things are true, and it'll show our box on the screen, but that won't actually send over any actual text first. So what we need to do is, back up here, we have our dialog lines string here. So what we're going to do is just set this to be equal to our dialog lines over here. So we can go down here, we can say dialog lines, oh, sorry, no, we need to say dman dot dialog lines is equal to whatever is currently stored in our dialog holders dialog lines. So we go like that. And the next thing we want to do is set it so that our dialog manager will start reading the text from the start of our box. So we'll say uh, our, on our dman, the current line should be equal to zero. Just in case we have uh, some situation arising where somehow we're ending up with our current line not being equal to zero. It could our dialog box. We could have something else deactivating text at some else at some point in the future. So we want to make sure that our current line is reset back to zero, so it's actually reading the right uh, dialog line for us. So now we'll save that. We'll go back into Unity here. We we'll obviously need to give some uh, a dialog some updated dialog to our little villager guy here. So we we'll let, let this compile. We already have our original text string there, but now we're going to add in a couple of more lines. So we're going to just make this a little bit bigger so that we know we have extra space. So we're just, we just put very simple little bits in here. Hey there, what's up? This is fun. Good. Bye. Okay. So now we should, if we hit play here, we should be able to see this in action when we walk over to our villager and start talking. So he says, hey there, what's up? This is fun. Goodbye. And there you go. So that's how you can cycle through some different lines of text and have it um, actually uh, a little bit more interesting for the player. You can have a bit of conversation going on. Um, 
but it's kind of weird the way we can walk around while we're in the middle of talking like this that's not really something that we want to be able to do it's kind of strange he can go walking off we're able to go walking around the world so what we're going to do is make sure that we can't actually start walking around and, and doing stuff in the world and make sure that our also our villager is uh, not able to walk around anything like that so we're going to take a look at doing that in the next video thanks for watching and i'll see you all very soon Thanks for watching this episode, and if you want to learn more about developing your own games, you can follow the link on screen to my complete 2D platformer game development course on Udemy, where you will learn how to program and build a complete game in Unity 2D with multiple levels, enemies, and unique boss battles. So click the link on screen or in the description below and get the course today.